Hi, welcome to Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today I'm talking with Tektronix. I have Andrea Vinici from Tektronix. Hi, Andrea. Hi, hi, good morning. And today we're going to talk about battery technology and power management. So, Andrea, IoT, battery life management for remote applications. Do you have any advice for testing and for monitoring of battery life? Oh yeah, we have we have plenty of advice <laughs> advices. You know, uh, this is a this is a key market for us, and um, the applications are are really you know emerging, but also changing. Uh, the IoT market is uh, moving. Uh, they say maintenance free, uh, meaning that uh, the IoT devices you know uh, are just left where the application uh, requires them to be and the battery must uh, last very long, or there must be other ways to charge it, uh, even wirelessly, potentially. Mm -hmm. So it's a very complex uh, world, especially complex for the IoT designers, uh, you know, and all the designers of the smart wearables uh, or any portable electronics, which is battery operated. And the, the key issues that, uh, that they have is really making sure that the, the battery lasts as long as possible. Right. This is this is the the number one problem. But uh, uh, this is this uh, uh, is a part of a of a bigger a bigger problem, which is uh, which starts with the choice of the batteries themselves. So you know uh, they these designers need to understand uh, whether to go with the really um, ultra um, ultra thin or ultra low power battery or uh, going with the, like printed batteries, for instance, or going with the uh, harvesting, energy harvesting yeah. solutions, right, uh, for instance. And uh, we are talking about uh, uh, current ranges uh, uh, around the nanoamps uh, or, or, or less, you know, very, very small currents. And also voltages uh, are between, uh, I don't know, 0 0.5 volts to 1.5 or 2 volts maximum. Uh, so uh, the ranges are quite challenges. Uh, it's challenging the range of the battery impedance where you are mm, testing, and therefore uh, for for testing, it's uh, it's critical as well. And this is why we are proposing very specific solutions in this space. Um, we have uh, solutions uh, for the measurements of these uh, low ranges, and uh, we have uh, solutions for the simulation of these ranges. Right. So what we typically offer is this. Okay, so that leads me on to another area where it's becoming a lot more common now is um, silicon carbide power devices. So what is it that Tektronix would recommend users need to be aware of and perhaps test for with those devices? Oh, okay. Well, uh, well, silicon carbide. Yes, it's uh, it's one of the two great uh, uh, wide band gap technologies that are, have uh, revolutionized the power electronics market. And uh, of course, uh, silicon carbide is uh, way more spread than at the moment uh, uh, compared to gallium nitride. Even if gallium nitride is catching up with uh, uh, let's say lower voltages uh, uh, applications, so. Uh, the proposal really depends on the type of test uh, that you need to apply to these uh, um, devices or modules, and it really depends on the context. If you need to do a, a static characterization, like in, in DC, or a dynamic characterization of the um, of the switching solution that is using these uh, uh, silicon carbide devices, so it may be that we offer. Uh, specific probes and oscilloscopes uh, for for characterizing the, the dynamic, the changing. This, uh, you know that uh, there are uh, fast switching uh, frequencies applied yeah. to the topologies uh, involved uh, with these devices. But uh, uh, you know we also have uh, what in the past we are called uh, carb tracers. You know to characterize, uh, um, you know to, to to track, for instance, for a MOSFET the different. Uh, uh, VBS current versus the drain current at the different VGS levels, and uh, we have uh, we have these modern current tracers that today are called the source and measure units, which are able to uh, apply uh, voltage and uh, and drive current to the device while measuring at the same time. So getting the IV curves that then are put in the data sheet of the component 
and uh, are kind of uh, uh, proving the performances yeah. of the device. Okay. One of the, the other areas where we're hearing quite a lot of uh, noise around is um, super capacitors or ultra capacitors versus battery. But primarily, what are the differences be between the two? What are the applications of each suited more towards? Well, uh, today uh, it's uh, it's not easy, you know, to to define a, a limit between when to use a supercapacitor or a battery or both, because in in, in many applications you can have both, uh, because this improves, uh, of course, the 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 design of the circuit under under several aspects. So, well, let me say that uh, there is a, there is a big difference, right, between uh, supercapacitors, of course, and uh, and batteries. So, a supercapacitors uh, uh, must uh, give you the ability of uh, uh, fast charging and discharging. So, this is the the main capability. You really need to have it within seconds. Okay, it's not mm -hmm. a matter of of hours like like for batteries. You wanted to have a higher power density, right? But uh, you have a lower energy compared to to a battery for instance so this is a this is a completely uh, different type of power reserve but you you can eventually use the two uh, the two things a supercapacitors or a supercapacitor or a battery in parallel for instance okay. you know and this is a kind of um a better way to design you know a circuit for instance uh, uh, when you when you have to connect these uh, to to a battery, right? You you add a supercapacitor, and this is uh, um, used, for instance, in I don't know devices like cameras, digital cameras, right? And uh, you have um, you can reduce the operating voltage of the battery that you choose, and you have an increasing uh, uh, operating life of the device if you use a supercapacitor together because it it helps uh, with the with the control of the transients yeah of, of of the battery of the use of the energy during the transients okay that's re that's really interesting point that you make there using them in, in parallel um but I, I just want to go back to maybe the automotive industry so battery use is obviously on the increase uh, we, we hear this quite a lot obviously with uh, electric vehicles etc what is it we need to be aware of in, in terms of testing, maybe the lab versus the production versus when it's in operation, for example? Oh, yes. Uh, well, this is a very, a very interesting topic because, you know, in Europe we are uh, we have seen uh, starting with uh, with Northvolt, but many other gigafactories are, are coming. So uh, the the automotive supply chain as uh, with this uh, electrical uh, vehicle revolution is uh, bringing the need to have the supply chain of batteries in Europe, right? That means that uh, we are not only involved in the in the R and D aspects like uh, the characterization of the the different type of electrodes that you can have uh, on on a, on an energy storage device like a battery, or uh, characterizing the behavior of different uh, electrolytes, or proving the separator. Uh, capabilities, but it's really uh, performing, uh, you know, tests during the the production, and we mm -hmm. typically, of course, support the electrical testing of uh, of batteries. Therefore, we typically intervene when it's a matter of, uh, um, let's say, starting from the so-called formation phase of the battery, when you need to cycle the battery a lot of times to prove that the battery quality yeah. is good that you don't have issues with the discharging for instance that that the really the the battery has been produced in, in the right way or we intervene when you need to when you have closed sealed the battery you put the electrolyte inside and you want to make sure that there is no leakage okay so you want to really to test the isolation of the battery or whenever you have a different cells and you want to group the cells together to, to design a battery module or a larger battery pack, there is the need to test, uh, for instance, the welding uh, uh, that connects the different, uh, the different uh, uh, um, subunits of the yeah. battery system. And in that case, uh, you need to supply equipment to, uh, to the uh, manufacturing, um, let's say, uh, automation a system uh, which uh, implies a multi-channel data logging uh, you know um, measuring a lot of the data coming also from the sensors for instance because uh, 
you need to 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 prove these on the on the multiple channels and you need to measure resistance you must need to measure the open circuit voltage of these several cells and you need to do it very fast and you need to collect all this data and you need to to perform also a statistical analysis of the um, of the data that you get because you need to be um, to apply statistical algorithms to exclude let's say uh, bad units uh, from the good lots okay okay that that's that's brings me on to the, the next question. So we're, we're talking about the testing there, but what what about battery management systems? So the, the BMS, what, what is it we need to look for within BMS? Well, the BMS is a, is a, is a, is a very complex, but uh, also exciting topic because, you know, uh, the BMS, the, is, is, it, it means battery management system. It, uh, it kind of takes care of the battery system, meaning that it really looks at each and every cell and it makes sure that all this uh, this complex system works well together how does it do that well there is a lot of uh, uh, you know data tracking including temperature for instance there is a lot of uh, uh, control because uh, you have, this is a really a, a system that um, uh, needs to make sure that uh, each cell is um, is correctly balanced and uh, you need to be uh, quite reactive when something wrong happens. So uh, the semiconductor um, suppliers are designing very, very complex architectures in terms of uh, uh, BMS, uh, uh, meaning cell monitoring, but mm -hmm. also, you know, uh, acting. And uh, this, uh, this is really a challenge with uh, making sure that you have uh, a lot of sensors that are um, that are monitored uh, very very rapidly, and you need to monitor uh, temperature, for instance, uh, from from several sensors. You need to to sense a lot of data, and you need to control them very fast. So there is a processing unit. Uh, there is a lot of uh, communication involved with the uh, with the central microprocessor. So you need to decode the serial bus systems as well. Uh, and then you need to make sure that the, the BMS controls the cooperation uh, and the effective uh, uh, working of the um, battery pack with the uh, rest of the uh, high voltage uh, power converters like the traction inverter for the electric vehicle or mm -hmm. uh, the, the battery charger and all the control logic that is applied to that. So. Uh, this is really a matter of uh, uh, testing on multiple levels. Okay, it's not just a matter of tracking data. It's really a, a full system control, and uh, that means uh, very complex architecture and a lot of test automation, a lot of programming involved. Cool. It really is quite a big subject, isn't it? Battery technology and power management. But I'm going to maybe put you on the spot. Would you recommend any particular products from your range for this se sector, for example? Well, there are several uh, products that we recommend for for battery testing uh, in general. So we we work very closely with system integrators in production, uh, supplying multi-channel uh, digital multimeters and data loggers because they they have the right resolution and the right accuracy uh, levels that this market is requesting. And uh, these DMMs are 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 not just uh, you know pure voltmeters. They can measure resistance as well, so they can perform uh, like uh, impedance tests or resistance mm -hmm. tests on the on the on, on the connectors, for instance. And they are quite flexible in terms of programming because they all have a microprocessor that can be easily programmed. So you can really easily integrate this into an automation uh, test system. Uh, we have uh, our SMUs, uh, uh, the Kitley branded uh, source and measure units, which are to, to make it easy. It's, they are four quadrants power supply. They can source voltage and current and sync, but at the same time measure uh, measure this data. And that means that you can cycle a battery, you know, mm -hmm. and perform the, the tracking of the open circuit voltage and the input uh, resistance over different levels of the state of charge which really is the, the sort of uh, passport of the battery to understand the, how it behaves and uh, if the performances are good. So our source measure units are, um, are very much used in this space as well as the digital multimeters. Cool. Andrea, it's such a, 
a wide topic um, and I really thank you for taking time today to to talk to Design Spark. It's been an interesting conversation and uh, I hope to see you again real soon. Me too. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for inviting me.